this meeting, community members attending the training introduced themselves, clearly indicating their portfolio and why they had come to attend the training. The community members' general understanding indicated the need to strengthen community resilience to disasters and to protect asset and livelihoods from the adverse impacts of natural and man-made hazards in their midst. Risk is closely tied to vulnerability and can be seen as a function of vulnerability itself. Communities who are most vulnerable will also probably be those most at risk to shock or disturbance to normal daily life. Although communities may face the same risk, they will not, however, be equally vulnerable. Understanding of key terms like resilience, capacity and vulnerability during the training was paramount. At first, villagers struggled to identify the Kalanga word for hazard, until after explanation by the facilitator, they decided on the word Chibelisu. The word for disaster was given as Chinyakihwa. The relationship between capacity and vulnerability appeared to have been well grasped. Vulnerability is perhaps best defined in terms of resilience and susceptibility, including such dimensions as physical, social, cultural and psychological vulnerabilities and capacities that are usually viewed against the backdrop of gender, time, space and scale. Community members agreed that wherever people live, they are not free from possible disasters and that they are vulnerable. The Hingwe communities in the Plum Tree district of Zimbabwe are vulnerable to this gully and they can be affected in various ways. Hingwe Gully is a hazard to community members, their buildings and livestock. The settlements always lose something or someone from hazards which destroy investments and diminish environments on which people must depend. But most people generally think about hazards only after a calamity has occurred.